You can't possibly stand against my three Murktide regents. Draw your last off-meta card so I can end this, Yuki. My grandpa's library has no off-meta cards, Kaiba. But it does contain... The Unstoppable Ulamog. I've assembled all three special lands, and I have an extra Urza's power plant out. Ugh, Ulamog. It's not possible. No one's ever been able to assemble Tron before. Ulamog, annihilate! Hey guys, Curious Six here with the Kaladesh Express, your number one source for universes beyond. And today we're going to be talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! Now I know a lot of Magic players don't like Yu-Gi-Oh! players and vice versa. I don't get that. I think they're both really cool card games and really cool worlds. Now I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh! I did play it a long time ago. I played it for many years. But we're not really focusing on the cards so much as the anime today. We're going to talk about what each Yu-Gi-Oh! character would play if they played Magic the Gathering. It's true. I went to a great deal of trouble recreating the Pharaoh's deck, strategies, even his perfectly quaffed hair. In fact, that part is what took the longest. Very specifically modern. I feel like that's the format that I know the best. <laughs> and I also think it's a format with a lot of diversity in decks and a lot of interesting archetypes to choose from so we can attach them to Yu-Gi-Oh characters. So if you're still down, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's jump into the world of Duel Monsters. Whoa, different camera angle, different lighting. What's going on? Is, is, is you tricking me? Yeah, you having a goof? I'm not. I actually am about to press send and edit this whole thing and be done with it, but I almost forgot to thank Southern Sorcery for their contributions to this video. Uh, Shane from Southern Sorcery voiced Yugi, and I think he did an amazing job. Please go check out their channel. They make amazing commander content. Uh, go sub to them. They're like at 1,300 sub -sub -sub subscribers. Uh, let's get them to 1,500. Let's get them to 10,000. Let's get them to a million. You hear me, Steve? You get Shane to a million. He voiced Yugi. You hear me, you hear me Kyle? Daniel's waiting for your subscription. Let's make it happen. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's time to do, 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 So the first people we're going to start with is Yugi and Kaiba, because I kind of spoiled them in the intro a little bit, and I think it's pretty obvious what Kaiba is going to be playing when you look at the modern meta as it stands today. Is it Murktide is going to be Kaiba's deck of choice? I think that's one of the coolest decks, and Kaiba's a cool dude. And also, it's the one with dragons, and Kaiba loves dragons. I have a blue eyes white dragon jet. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> I could go further, but it's the only deck with dragons that really matters, so Kaiba would definitely be playing that. Plus, it puts up really big numbers, and Kaiba likes to win. As far as Yugi goes, I think he would start with Tron, or more specifically, I think he'd be playing his grandfather's Tron deck. <laughs> Once his Ulamog are tossed overboard by that underhanded Weevil Underwood, he will transfer over to Golgari Yogmoth. I think this is the perfect deck for Yugi. It gives him a very cool boss monster that's kind of a good replacement for Dark Magician, and they both have that gothic sexy boy thing that Yugi seems to be really into. I think this is the perfect match made in heaven, and yeah, that's my guess for Yugi. Then we got Joseph Joey Wheeler. You're a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. Hey, you know who else is a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck? Me, and I play Hammer Time. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. In all seriousness, I think Hammer Time is a really good deck for Joey. It's about suiting up small creatures with equipment, sending them into combat, smooth brain operations. I think that's totally Joey's style. It's my style, and that's why I can recommend it so highly. Also, you get to play with knights, and Joey likes knights, you know? There is no dragon in Hammer Time, but I think Calja Complete is kind of a good replacement for Red-Eyes Black Dragon. It's kind of this big boss monster that's not really that much of a threat until it really is. And that's, that's kind of Joey's whole deal. You also get to play with weird cards. You know, we don't really have a Time Wizard and a Baby Dragon, but we do have like a Giver of Runes and an Ornithopter. And those are kind, those are also cards. <laughs> I don't know, this one might be a stretch, but I think the combat oriented focus of Hammer Time fits Joy to a T. It's just very blunt, it's very stupid, it just kind of goes, and I love that. It looks like your strategy backfired, giving me the advantage, little Joey. Wrong! <sighs> do you think I'd be dumb enough to let that happen? 
Yes! Next we have Ryu Bakura, and this was a very interesting one to figure out, as we don't really have a deck that is very similar to Ryu Bakura's deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! the anime. Bakura's deck is the Necros deck, which is all about flooding the board with lots of necro monsters and getting advantage off each other so you get one big boss monster now we do have tribal decks in match the gathering we have one really big tribal deck in modern actually but i think we know where that one tribal deck is going to and it ain't ryu bakura now i decided to focus on bakura's vibe for his deck choice instead of his deck mechanics that he would play in the anime because there's really nothing akin to it that we can offer bakura except maybe elves but that doesn't really feel like it matches either no instead i decided to go with esper reanimator for bakura I feel like that just the dark undertones of Esprit Animator fit Bakura way better, you know? But I don't know, there's just really nothing close to the Necros deck for him, so gotta give him something. He's gonna play a modern competitive deck because he's a relatively good duelist, so says the anime, so he has to play a relatively good deck. And I think this one's fine, you know, feels Bakura. All right, Maximilian Pegasus, AKA, in our hypothetical, CEO of Wizards of the Coast. What would Maximilian Pegasus play if he could pick from any deck in the history of the card game of Match the Gathering? Well, he picked the most degenerate deck. So if you don't know, the story of Maximilian Pegasus, as far as his deck goes, is that he picked cards for his personal deck that were unavailable to the public. So we don't really have that in Magic the Gathering. If you can play with it in the competitive format, you can play with it everywhere. We do have the cards that Wizards gives out to its employees as gifts that are just for the employees and not like legal in any format, but those aren't really what we're going for. Plus all those feel like commander cards. So instead what I decided to look toward is the band list. And there are plenty of cards that Pegasus would love to play on the band list, but I'm gonna keep it simple and give Pegasus Rakdos Evoke pre-ban. Like he would still play Rakdos Evoke with Fury. I think that fits his vibe very well. He's a cheater, and he's very in your face about it. Plus, Rakdos Evoke also gives him grief, which gets to use his The All-Powerful Millennium Eye. My Millennium Eye will show me the answer. Know what the opponent's gonna do, you know, as they're doing it. I think that's a very cool way to fuse Pegasus' mechanics with the card game. Merrick Ishtar, the final boss of the Battle City Tournament. Merrick Ishtar is pretty interesting. He plays a deck that is focused around preparing for a big monster and then a big monster coming out kind of like ramp his big monster was winged dragon of raw we don't have cards that fill in for the egyptian god cards in the same way but we do have cards that help you ramp into a big creature in an unconventional way and that's mono black coffers and Karn the great creator merrick ishtar also played winged dragon of raw like i said and winged dragon of raw's abilities were whatever merrick ishtar wanted them to be i think karn is a really good like monster for Eric to star to use as a boss monster. Yu-Gi-Oh! has a history of doing whatever it wants, whenever it wants to solve any problem, whether it says that on the card or not. Such as, The Moon! No! Destroy the Moon! <laughs> so I think Karn's wishboard ability would be a very useful tool to have so that Merrick Ishtar can just get whatever he needs to solve his problem at that moment. So Duke Devlin's one of the major side characters in Yu-Gi-Oh! He follows Yu-Gi and the gang around through a lot of season two and three, if I remember correctly, but definitely in season two. And his whole gimmick, his whole shtick was he liked to have a deck that rolled a lot of dice and gambled and kind of made it like, seem like he didn't know exactly what was gonna happen, but he knew what was gonna happen. All of the odds were tipped in his favor, the house always wins kind of thing. So we do have a deck that kind of fits Duke Devlin. It doesn't roll dice per se, but it kind of does. And that's gonna be five color creativity. The deck's about setting up a specific combo and acting like you're not sure if you're gonna get the combo or not, flipping cards off the top, but you're always gonna get the thing you want because there's only so many targets in the deck. So Mr. America himself, Bandit Keith. You truly are a stubborn one, aren't you? Can it? You ain't talking your way out of this one. Whoops, looks like four kids is at it again, Bandit Keith. Here, I'll, I'll help you out. I'll get you a gun. Just hold on. There you go. Now hand over that prize money or else. I thought his pick would be simple. I'd just pick some Just Guy Control deck or whatever, just call it a day. However, there is no popular Just Guy Control deck right now. Thanks, Randy. So instead, I had to look at his monster type, and I found out Bandit Keith is a big fan of machine-type monsters. And luckily, we do have a couple decks that do focus on 
artifact creatures, which is a close approximation of machine type monsters. The one I decided to pick for him was Thopter Control, headed by Urza, another character who's just very arrogant and full of himself and possibly would have destroyed the world if he got what he wanted. And if that does not scream America, I don't know what does. All right, Ishizu Istar is Merrick's younger sister and top tier waifu of Yu-Gi-Oh! And if anyone says anything about my Valentine in the comments, I am personally gonna come over and duel you into submission and send you into the Shadow Realm. Ishizu plays a deck that revolves around graveyard manipulation, and we do have a couple decks like that in Modern, but the deck I'm choosing for her is Esper Mill. I feel like, again, Esper is a combination that has a mysterious feel to it, and Ishizu is a mysterious character. Also does a lot with graveyard manipulation, which is her whole bag. I'm going to leave it there when it comes to Ishizu Istar. There's not a lot to say about her. She was a relatively minor character, but a very popular one, so I wanted to give her some deck. But uh, that's about it. If anyone says anything about my Valentine, though, buddy. Shadow Realm, I'm sending you to Tampa, Florida. Finally, we have Meiko Tsunami, who's going to be playing Mono Green Elves. Yeah, I mean, of course he's playing the Merfolk deck. I don't, I don't, I don't know what else you expected. He's the fish dude. He's the freaky fish guy. I am not a freaky fish guy. And that does it for my list of Yu-Gi-Oh characters and what decks they play if they played Modern Magic. I thought this was pretty fun. If you got some suggestions for better decks in the comments or other characters you think would should have been on the list or maybe decks you think they should have played, let me know. I'm highly curious. And if you like videos like this, also let me know. I'll make more of them. I have a lot of these ideas. Universe of Beyond's been kind of slow, so I wanted to fill in the time with something very interesting, very fun. And yeah, I'll be back soon. Sorry this video is so late. I had finals and I didn't want to fail. But yeah, thanks guys. Courier 6 with the Kaladesh Express, your number one source for universes beyond, and I'll see you soon. I don't think I can do this. Uh, uh, the deck, it senses my doubt. Huh? Our friendship symbol. Yugi, we're right here with you. Yugi, you've got to believe in yourself. You can do it. Just kick Kaiba's butt. They're right. I've got to believe in the cards like my friends believe in me.